What's up everyone? So today we're going to talk about how to deal with information overload and this was actually motivated by a comment I got in my last video where a student asked how to manage the large amounts of information that you often face as an incoming medical student or if you're just starting out in college. So if that's you, um, hope you enjoyed the rest of this video. Let's do it. So as I mentioned, this video is for anyone starting college who feels overwhelmed and also people starting medical school who may be feeling overwhelmed with the amount of information that's being thrown your way. I'm going to give you definitely at least five tips today that will help you address this problem and hopefully it'll help you manage time and also get more out of uh, education. So the first tip that I'm going to tell you may run uh, counter or maybe in line with what you've been told before, which is that quality is way more important than quantity. When you are going through information overload and you're being thrown a lot of stuff your way, it is much more important to just grasp at least one to three big concepts per lecture than trying to memorize the entire encyclopedia of that lecture. Memorizing the minute details is actually a recipe for disaster early on, and instead I would focus on learning the big picture stuff. So let me give you an example. In biochemistry, it's much more important to understand the ins and outs of each process than to understand the intermediates. It's much more important to understand where processes are happening instead of memorizing every single enzyme. And the reason for this is because that foundation will be more than important and more than enough for your first year of uh, medical school and also for your first uh, exposure through a concept. And the reason for this is because when you're first going through something, Big concepts matter way more than the details. And this leads me to my second point, which is this aspect of machine learning. It is really tough to know what details are important when you first approach a subject. There will be some details that will be important. For example, in biochemistry, there are obviously enzymes that are important, but you will not know those right off the bat. And for that reason, when you're first approaching that topic, it's much more important to address the big concepts than to address the details. But as you start going through things, start using the machine learning aspect of your brain. There's this aspect of machine learning which we think about in tech, but there's also machine learning in the form of your brain because your brain in and of itself is a machine. And so the way I usually approach this is that as things are mentioned more and more often, so let's say you start biochemistry, you approach it with a broad mindset. And then you start realizing like, oh, this enzyme, phosphofructokinase, it keeps getting mentioned over and over again. Well, guess what? If something's mentioned over and over again, chances are it's important. So as you lay down the foundation, you fill that foundation in with the details that are relevant and you'll know which details are relevant because those are the ones that will be mentioned multiple times. And one thing that you can take comfort in is that if something is important, you will often be exposed to it in at least three or four different ways. I can tell you for a fact that to this day, as someone who is about to become an MD, the parts that are really important were hit home multiple times. You'll often see it one time in your lecture, you'll see it another time in your workshop, you'll see it another time when you're shadowing a doctor, you'll see it another time when you're on your clerkships as a medical student, and then you'll see it another time as an intern. So the stuff that's really important gets hit on 80 to 90 different times. So chances are you will not miss it. So take comfort in knowing that um, you can memorize the big stuff and then fill in the details as it happens. Now, the third tip I have for you, and this is going to sound a little bit counter, so you know, bear with me here, but it's to embrace your, me your mediocreness, right? When you're approaching a topic for the first time, you are not going to be the best at it. But guess what? That may make a lot of people sad, I encourage you to actually feel happy and embrace this fact. Because when you're first learning something, no one expects anything from you at all. You could fail the subject, you could ask the stupidest question, you could ask them like, hey, I literally have no idea what you're talking about and they will be okay with it. So with that said, I actually strongly encourage you to embrace that um, lack of knowledge and ask the fundamental questions. Create a spreadsheet of even the most stupid questions you have and write them down and try to ask a professor, try to ask someone else, try to ask a person uh, in a realm of authority because oftentimes you may not be able to do that when you become an intern or a resident or when you're in 
you know, a deeper level of that class. Because at that point, maybe they expect you to know a little bit more and maybe you have other responsibilities. Like for an intern, they're taking care of so many patients that even if they have a question about the underlying pathophysiology of a disease, they don't have the time or the priority to ask it. But when you're a student, you actually do. So embrace that lack of knowledge and really write down all the basic questions you ever have and create a spreadsheet and working Google document of it because that's actually the one time where you can ask really deep questions and professors love that. Professors love when they're like, I'm so glad you asked me this question because even though it may seem basic, it's actually not and here's why. And they will take uh, the time to explain it to you. When I was going through uh, my preclinical studies in medical school, I had a running document of questions, as you can see on this slide. And I would break it down by subject, neurology, infectious disease, endocrinology, cardiology. And I would just have this document, which ended up being at least 50 to 60 pages of questions and answers. Each of the questions I would have, I would then email a professor in that specialty and say, hey, I love your lecture. Could you answer these questions for me? I'm like new to this, clearly don't know a lot. Um, and they would respond back because they would be so in love with the fact that a student actually took the time to write these questions out. So I encourage you to do that, embrace the mediocrity, and, and be okay with not knowing everything. It's totally fine, and people expect you to not know anything, and they want to help fill in the gaps. So that's my third tip for you. With all of this being said, we have two more tips. But the fourth tip is probably the most important one and probably the one that will bring you the most um, value. And that is the fact that early on when you're learning things, limits are good. Limits are great. Anyone who goes into college, anyone who goes into medical school often has this urge to be the person who knows everything. Guess what? Rome wasn't built in a day. And so by you wanting to know everything, you were going to spend three to four hours on a lecture when in reality, maybe that lecture should not have taken up that much of your time, but you wanted to know every single detail about it. And I know where you're coming from. And I too was like that. Do not do that. And um, don't let perfect be the enemy of the good, right? Because perfect is not attainable, especially not in medical school and definitely not as an attending or even a resident down the road. So for that reason, I actually set limits for myself and it actually helped me a lot. For one lecture, I would try not to spend more than 45 minutes reviewing it. So I would watch the lecture first and then I would spend some time reviewing it and making flashcards. So I would spend 45 minutes and if I spend more than that, I would cut myself off. Similarly, I tried not to make more than 40 flashcards per lecture, and even that was a lot. Because for example, a lecture, uh, a class might have about 40 uh, lectures sometimes. And if you're making 40 cards per lecture, that's 1,600 flashcards. That's so many flashcards, right? So try to make sure you limit yourself, whether that's in the number of flashcards you're making, whether that's in the number of amount of time you're spending on a lecture. Those limits early on are very important because otherwise it's so easy to get bogged down by the details and actually get really overwhelmed by the information. When in reality, if you set limits, you're saying, okay, I'm going to be okay not knowing everything, but I'm just going to try to get through this in 40 minutes uh, from page one to the page end, and we're going to do that. And by setting those limits, you actually will force yourself to consolidate and understand the big points rather than um, focusing too much on the details. Now, this brings me to my last tip here, which is to zoom out. If you want to avoid being overwhelmed by information, it is very important that you stay in your own lane. Don't worry about everyone else. Stay in your own lane, but also zoom out and understand that you are part of a much bigger process here. And people who are much less qualified than you, I promise, people who feel much less competent than you, believe it or not, they do exist. There's There are people like that who feel that they don't know as much have made it through this process. There are so many doctors out there, so many graduates of colleges out there, so many individuals out there today who were in your shoes at one point and felt like they could not do it, and they did it. So take comfort in knowing that you are joining a career institution where many people have come before you, felt exactly what you're feeling right now. I guarantee you, you are not the first person feeling the level of information overload that you are feeling right now. Hundreds of thousands of people have probably felt the exact same thing that you have. So just take comfort in knowing that. Take comfort in knowing that your feelings are normal and valid. Stay in your own lane and understand that you will be okay and the stuff that's important will get hammered home in more ways than one. And I promise you, uh, you will not get left behind. So I hope this brought a little bit of comfort to you guys. And if it did, please drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe. It means a lot to me. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.